Today I am making a 30 inch uh, grading bucket for my mini excavator. I have a one foot bucket right now and it's a little too small. So I traced the traced the bucket with cardboard and uh, I have a couple jobs coming up that I need to move a lot of dirt. So I got a 316 steel that I'm going to cut 30 inches and then bend it with the press. So here's the tracing of the bucket. Um, two inch pipe here, curve, then it starts to flatten out at the bottom. And so I have to bend more here and then leave this kind of flattish. So I have the center line marked out to where I want the center of the bucket to be bent the most. So I'm just rolling it. This will be about a four inch, uh, half inch uh, cutting edge here. And then if you roll it this way, you got about two inches for the pipe. That's I'm gonna weld that on too. So that's about center there where the most curve is. So I just have to work this. So I'm just gonna mark every two inches or so.
and where it kind of starts to flatten out. Then I'll run them across and I got my straight edges for the, uh, the press. So I kind of have my reference points here for the press. And uh, I'll bang this with a hammer around the pipe a little bit. And then this part is more of the flat side of the bucket. So that should work. Let's try it on the press. So there's our center line here. So let's get that started first. All right, I will let off and just work my way back and forth until I get a nice curve. Seems like the right side's getting hung up a little bit. I'll have to fix that. But as you can see, it's kind of kind of whipping nicely. Seems like I need some stronger springs to pull it up too. And I'll, I'm using my white lines as reference points so I don't bend it crooked. Then you'll have a wonky bucket. See if you can see that better. 
the V, the V is about four inches, maybe five inches. So the metal bends ease, a lot easier the bigger the V is on the bottom. Seems like spraying the sides made it a lot easier to bend. All right, we'll come over here. Oh, I did have another bend. Let's throw that back in there one last time. Look at that whip. I see a lot of forums ask people asking how to put a nice bend on a bucket. I think this is one of the only ways. Let's check it on our template. So there's our bend there. There's our center. Not too bad at all. Right there. That's sweet. Let's do a little bit more bending. Probably have another inch on either side. Now, if you wanted to be picky, you could, I guess, split the difference and make a nice bend. But I'm gonna be putting wear bars underneath, so you'll never see like the, the, the bends. All 
All right. Check it. Check it. So let's grab our template. Not bad at all. Look at that. Look at that. So I'll put a bend up here to, to round that off. Lay that flat. Can you see that? That's it. How do you like me now? So that'll just, I'll trace this onto a piece of metal, weld it right there, and then we're good. All right, so I lined it up with the other bucket and it looks near perfect. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to build the sides next. I'm going to mimic what they did. Build the sides about three quarters of the way. And then nice piece of half inch for uh, the sides here. And then a beveled piece here for the bottom. So I'll make the sides out of the same material, 3 16 and then I will uh, mimic this bucket and make the sides where they contact the dirt the most with half inch steel. I'm keeping a one inch overhang for the bucket so that the half inch on the sides can tie into the actual bucket and not just the sides, which should make it plenty strong enough.
I'll try the next one freehand for fun. All right, there you go. I like that better. I tacked both sides. I left some overhang on the bottom and the sides to be able to weld the back and the front. And then my half inch shear plate will tie into the bucket too. All right, so I welded both sides on the outside. Uh, see if the light can see that or not. Both sides. I'll probably weld the inside. 
as well. Gotta love that, huh? Just bang the slag off. And you got a nice three piece of steel. So here's where I'm at with this. I got a uh, three eight side plates on, and then I welded a uh, two inch pipe, steel pipe across the top. And it tied everything together. Now I bought um, half inch plate for the uh, blade on the bottom. And then I bought five eight um, flat plate for the ears.
So I bought this 5 8 um, by 5 inches wide. I bought a, a 7 foot length. They had a cut off off a 20 footer. So I wanted a um, 6 inches wide, but I think I can modify it. To make the ear work. I traced the ear on the other bucket that I already had and um, exaggerated it a little bit but if it doesn't fit I can make that work. That'll be fine. So I marked on the ear a good half inch around the uh, where the collar goes with the pin. Um, this is a good half inch or a little bit more. Rule of thumb, I like to make the weld uh, just almost the same or if not the same thickness as the uh, the metal you're welding um, just to have a nice you can layer a couple beads up and not have to worry about it breaking off the uh, edge of the ear so you can come over to your bucket And take a look, see if you like it. I'll go right there. And then I'll edge that down to here. And uh, that'll be fine. I can't believe that cut through 5.8. This machine is rated for 3.8. So I'll take a little bit of slag on the bottom and clean it with a grinder just to cut through that. Not too bad. And you got an ear. Is that beautiful or what? Best ear you've ever seen. I'm gonna cut another one. Gonna put a bevel on the blade.
So there's a reasoning why I made it so tight. When I welded the sides, they were actually starting to pull in on the front, kind of like laying like this. So on both sides. So I want to use these as nice cutting edges. So if they're turned in, it won't cut as nicely. I want them flush, straight, or even turned out a little bit. So. I beat that thing in there and I believe that, that that'll be perfect. So I'll weld that up. So that's how it'll look. I'll probably bevel this more. Um, so next is the ears. I'll weld all that up tonight after everybody goes to sleep. Starting to look like a bucket. Little trick if you want to get two pieces of steel that you obviously have to grind down exactly the same or as close as you can. Grind down the edges if you use a plasma cutter or whatever so they sit flat against each other. And then stack them together. I have to drill two holes for the uh, pins, for the ears anyway. So drill two holes in the spot you want. I have my uh, cardboard little layout. So drill two holes, put a bolt between them. Same size as the hole. Find the hole. Now when you grind them, I'll clamp them together. Then when you grind them, see how off that is? The one in the back, you can make them exactly the same. So I grinded it, almost perfect, good enough for me. I'm just gonna weld it up and it won't matter. This side's pretty perfect too. So what I'm thinking is when I curl my uh, bucket, and this is only 3 16th steel, um, it, these are gonna be spread out five inches apart. And I'm thinking that the steel will start to bend in the middle from uh, having so much force. So I'm thinking if I stick a scrap piece of metal between them underneath of the ear, it will uh, give it a little support. And then I might add um, a piece in the middle That's what I'm kind of going for. So I'll have to bend that quarter inch to uh, form it with the bucket. 
So one slight issue with this bottom die is if you don't have a piece of metal that spans across the, the two points, um, this could, while you're pressing it, could potentially slip either this way or this way. So my idea was I'll keep this with the biggest bends for the easiest uh, and thickest metal. And then I could throw a couple more pieces of angle iron in there and it closes up the, uh, the V. So I'll have to invest in uh, different pieces of angle iron. Here's my fan crew. <laughs> Bay Pay. Say hi. <laughs> All right, so I bent the uh, quarter inch steel plate, and first attempt, I think it came out pretty, pretty good. I just, good as I'm gonna get it so I think I'm gonna weld that up and then drill a couple holes for the uh, collar as they call it and then I'm gonna probably grind out a little bit more where that plate sits but other than that um, I'll tack everything up and then I'm going to mount it on the machine and uh, make sure everything's square plumb and exactly how I want it.
All right, the uh, hole saw got pretty dull quick. So I just cut it out with the plasma cutter. I was tired of waiting. I got the uh, plate tacked on there for now and then I um, measured the uh, inside and outsides and put a nice grind on it so it's almost ready for welding. So on these collars that holds the pin in so the the pin on the machine doesn't rotate in these uh, collars. The pin rotates inside the um, boom of the machine. So these two inches roughly, two inches, and then on this side where the pin just sits in there, we got inch and a quarter, mm, inch and a half. Yeah, make a inch and a half. And it seems like they almost grinded that flush. And then this side is protruding out an inch. Cool. So I got everything beveled. I got nice big gaps, which I'm okay with, because I'll just fill them in with weld and it'll be nice and strong. Both sides. I'm going to tack the outsides and a little trick, you point it inward a little bit, tack the outside and then you can square it up perfectly when you bang that bang against that tack and then put a square on uh whatever and, and uh make it nice and square with the bucket so i tacked both sides uh top and bottom i left this side untacked so that when i bang the ear to the right it'll stay on those nice strong tacks you don't want little tacks because it'll just break right off so when this weld cooled it pulled everything to the right so I'm gonna get a square that'll hold hold everything you put a square up against it and uh, you can play with it as you want Now I'm going to try to mirror the same tacks so they'll it'll be holding this tack will be holding the piece of metal back from trying to turn that way.
when it cools, you can actually feel the metal pulling um, towards the tack. So to keep everything square and true, I have um, some pieces of uh, two inch square stock, scrap pieces. I cut to five and a quarter and I can just uh, keep everything um, perfect. All right, the food guy came and now I'm all messed up. Um, I misplaced one of these somehow. I don't know how it could be missing. But, and I misplaced the tape measure. <laughs> all right, so on the right side is the two inch ones. Two inch ones here. And it is a very tight fit, which is good. These are half inch in. This one and it's missing brother are half inch in two and almost flush with there. Alright, I cut another one. I looked for about 30 seconds. So these are like inch and five sixteenth uh, inside diameter. So I got instead of when those wear out of um, cutting them out and rewelding new pieces of that tubing in, I got these bushings. The only thing I could find on Amazon that'll uh, get it to me now. And I think they're, they're steel with a copper brass coating kind of. So they should be perfect for the pin size. It's 34 millimeter outside, 30 inside. And that's exactly what my machine is, 30 millimeter pin. The pins are probably worn, so it's, it's gonna fit no matter what. When, there's, when this wears out, I'm just going to press it out, press a new one in, and you got uh, tight pins again. It's crazy windy today. My camera keeps falling over. All right, so I have these hammered probably halfway in. I don't. I think these are hardened. They feel pretty hard to me. So 
the pin's not bad it's a little uh worn down on these couple spots but i don't think it matters so they fit in nice and tight though so So I got these together. Uh, I just got this yellow skid steer trailer. I'll make another video on that, cleaning it up and whatnot, painting. But if I push these both the same angle down here, where the cross beams are touching, whatever you want to call it, the angle on the ears is the same. You can pretty much look straight down the ear and, and look at the other bucket, which is good. Because uh, if you were to change the angle of the, uh, the holes, if you were to have it more uh, horizontal, you can curl the bucket more. And if you have it uh, more vertical, you wouldn't be able to curl the bucket as much but you can flatten the bucket uh, like you're going to grab something. But you couldn't curl, you can only curl it to like three quarters of the way. And same goes with the other, the other direction. So this is sitting flat on the ground right there. And the, uh, everything essentially lines up, but I'm gonna throw it on the machine to double, double, triple check everything. I did find the collar inside when I went to go get my keys. So I knew as soon as I made a new one, I'd find it. So what else I'm, I was looking for was when I scoop the bucket, there's no light under the blade. So it's pretty much perfectly level in the machine um, with the ground so you can make a nice uh, hole. All right, so I welded everything up. Everything got two passes. 
Um, the ears got three. Um, a root and two hot passes. Should be plenty strong enough for a little 1.5 ton machine. So I got the blade welded on. So I'm going to clean it up tomorrow and then I will uh, paint it and throw it on the machine and uh, try it out. I cut a couple uh, wear bars. I think these were off the uh, press bed I had laying around. They're a 3.8, so it should take a while for them to wear out. And I have a little 3.16. So, I'll weld these. Just a couple stitch welds. Um, one here. Make it look copacetic. One here, one here, and then one at the top. All right, so this is what I came up with. Just a couple pieces of scrap. Throw on this, and then they'll wear down eventually. I made it, I only stitched every couple inches just so I can grind them off if I have to later. A full weld is definitely not necessary. But, that's it for this. Just throw some paint on it. And that's it. I just have to drill a hole uh, here and here to lock the pin in. And that's it. On the next video I'll show using it, I have to re-gravel my driveway.